Hey guys, welcome back to RV Living Yet. Now, I have a question for you. Are you sick of your refrigerator? I know we are. So come along with us as we show you how we fix our problem. Aw oh, man, killed my lettuce again. This refrigerator. All right, we're so over this refrigerator as you can see and it has some pros, don't get me wrong. It is a great boondocking refrigerator. It definitely helps when it switches over to propane. For us, we have the solar. Not a big deal for us. So one of the other reasons why we want this out of here is it's too small and it doesn't keep our food regulated at the proper temperature. So it's time to get, at, get this out of here. Come along with us because we are either going to screw this up royally or we're going to put it in Nice and easy. All right, so when we decided to get the new fridge, first step I took was measure the old one before ripping everything out. So this is a good way to do it with your refrigerator. Just get an idea, uh, basically where this turns into the wood. You don't want to go to the end because you have this little trim piece here, but I put it right at the edge here and right about inside here. And I determined that my rough opening was roughly 23 and a half inches. And my height did the same thing. And my height is roughly 60 and a quarter inches or so. So I know that I need the height and width on the fridge. And then I also looked at my depth. That's an important thing. I know on the outside you have the thickness of this wall. And to the edge of here, I'm looking at 24 and a half inches. So I would need to stay from the body of the fridge. Um, 24 and a half inches so that I can fit the depth in there. And then we went online and we found a cost-effective refrigerator that fit these dimensions. We end up finding one at Home Depot and we'll show you that one next. Hey guys, as you can see we just got home from Home Depot and we got the new refrigerator. So it's about time that we get that inside the RV. So let me get this unboxed and stop waving around the knife. It's just got so much more room so much more room. All right, next step, putting it in. So step one, turn off the gas. All right, one step after I turned off the gas, I'm just purging the lines by running some through the stove here and letting all the gas run out so we don't have any issues. All right, another step you wanna take is pull the 12 volt fuse out for the refrigerator since we're gonna be disconnecting those lines and we don't wanna short out there. All right, here we're at the back side of the refrigerator. Just opening the access panel. And you can see in here, we got a couple more screws holding the refrigerator in. We have our gas line connection. You have the 120 plug. And we have our 12 volt lines. And these all need to be disconnected. Uh, we have a Norcold, but I'm pretty sure that's the same for a Dometic fridge or any of the standard fridges. I'm going to pop the trim off. There's a couple screws on the front, on the top and bottom. And that's all that's holding the inside. So let's do that. Pops right off. Here we got a screw, a screw. And down here we have a screw, a screw. All right, and that's it for the inside. I'm going to tape off these connections just to be sure that in case anybody puts a fuse in in the future that they don't go live and short out. One of 
the final steps we're going to do is plug our gas line. Probably the most important step though, don't forget to do this. Uh, what we end up buying is a 3 8 inch flared plug. So it's going to have a little flare on the end and it's just a plug that goes into this gas line. I like to put a little bit of pipe dope on the threads just to seal those up. Not totally necessary, but when you're dealing with gas, I like to just be extra cautious. Okay. Screw it in and we're going to tighten it up. Alright, so finally we're going to turn the gas back on and a good rule of thumb is to spray this with soapy water and make sure you don't have any bubbles coming out. If you have bubbles, you have a leak, you got to go back and tighten it up a little bit more. So definitely check, make sure that you don't have any gas leaking here. And then we're just going to push this aside and abandon it for now until we or the next person wants to put a regular fridge back in. So I ended up picking up some of this foam pad. I was looking for some exercise pad or something, but Home Depot had these runners. It's pretty solid, thick stuff. I'm going to put it under the feet of the fridge because these fridges are not designed to uh, for the vibration of going down the road. So something like this is going to dampen that vibration a little bit and it's going to keep it a little bit more stable in there. So I'm just going to cut little squares out of this, slide it under all four corners, and that should help out with that. All right, guys, we got this shimmed in. We got the foam pads. This Provide a little bit of vibration dampening. Everything's level and square. It looks like where we want it. So I'm going to end up running some screws through the bottom here, tacking the bottom down, and then eventually on the top we're going to put some L brackets them out the top to keep it from rocking. And we're getting there. Some insulation on the top here just to keep the air from getting in we're still going to have these access panels we'll let this thing cool down i'm probably going to leave the back of this open i'm also going to put some l brackets we have some metal studs here and i'm going to mount an l bracket right there on both sides just to hold the top of the fridge in place so we have it screwed in the bottom a couple l brackets on the top All right, guys, we are done. This bad boy's installed. Looks pretty good. We may come back and do a little bit of trim around the perimeter and see. We're going to live with it for a little bit and see uh, how that turns out. But you really can't tell that there's a little bit of a gap. But all in all, looks good. Way more room on the inside. And we got it in there pretty solid. So it's, you know, between the L brackets and screwed to the bottom, I think it's going to be pretty good. And then we put those rubber feet on underneath to absorb some of the vibration going down the road. Uh, again, big things about this is make sure you cap your gas line properly. And we pulled the fuse out for the 12 volt and then I also taped that off so it's not exposed. So got rid of that stuff. And other than that, it looks good. As far as traveling with this, we have solar and we have a pretty big lithium battery bank and an inverter. So this guy will run while we're traveling. Uh, if you decide on putting a residential fridge into your unit, Either whether you're full-time stationary, this is perfect. It uses a lot less energy. Um, 
if you're traveling short distances you can go to the campground and back and just keep the doors closed and this thing will stay pretty cool but if you're doing long travel days or boondocking like us again we got the inverter the lithium batteries and the solar on the roof so it's going to run I've done some calculations and I'm going to verify that as we live with it that this should run about 34 watts an hour which is really nothing and I think that's on a consistent basis obviously there's going to be times where the compressor kicks in and it's going to run higher but based on the calculation of what this uses in a year and divided by the hours in a year it came to 34 watts an hour so that's that's next to nothing when we have 600 watts on the roof so we're going to live with it for a while but if you guys are thinking about doing a residential fridge it's pretty easy and i hope this helped you out a little bit feel free to like and subscribe and join us on the next video thanks guys